By the way, where is the your base? Pardon? So where is your base? You know, which country and then which oh, states? I am in Florida. So oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Where are you tuning in from? Yeah, I'm East Coast side in Boston. Yeah. Okay. So were, you, if, were you on the Boston tour yesterday? Oh, yeah. That's cute. Yeah, so favorite places yeah cool and then this is already almost full so today i think uh 70 actually in this morning uh 54 the weather is 54 degree in this morning and then that's why i put my hoodie back on so this is actually devcom check we probably just two years ago just more for covid 19 thing and then when we can come back to in-person event like a dev comp us it will be definitely boston area so so everyone else can wake up to 54 degrees that <laughs> yeah you cannot imagine that right no <laughs> yeah you definitely need some hoodie and it's a long sleeve not show sure pants absolutely not i would be out there with just a blanket on yeah, but you know, I saw a lot of the New England people, like uh, specifically Boston, uh, people, the man really uh, try to showcase I'm the man. So even the freezing cold out there, you got uh, some hoodie and the padding, but you still wear short pants. Oh, that's so funny. That's you weird, gotta, actually. Got to show off that you don't, you don't need that. But. Yeah. All right, it is 131. Um, I guess to everyone tuning in, welcome to Quarkus Hands On Practices for Spring Developers. This is Daniel O, and I will hop off and let you take it away. Thank you so much, Isabel. And uh, just echoing once again, uh, my name is Daniel, and welcome to joining the Quarkus Hands On Practice for Spring Developers. So first of all, let me share my screen. And that is the hardest part to find the sharing button here. All right, here we go. And then, all right. Hopefully you can see my screen. All right, so, so today we're gonna spend almost two hours to uh, play with the hand Hangzhou stuff for Quarkus application development rather than uh, I'm not gonna drive the, the boring slides there. Of course, I'm gonna just bring the quick overview of uh, what Quarkus is and what is the main goal of this Quarkus Hangzhou workshop, specifically Spring Developer. Just a quick introduction by myself. Uh, I am a technical marketing major and developer advocate at Red Hat. Uh, specialized in cloud every runtime like a Quarkus, Spring Boot, Node.js. And then I spent a lot of time to integrate the cloud every application with the uh, platform like a server list and service mesh practices. So I'm also responsible for CNCF and DevOps Institute Ambassador for a few years and try to give you some uh, more uh, uh, tangible architecture and a more practice for enterprise application environment. And uh, here's my book. I recently uh, part of the co-author of the Quarkus for Spring Developer. You can actually uh, download for free when you go to uh, developerredhead.com. So let me uh, bring that up just end of the session. Okay, here's my Twitter. Uh, follow me and then ask me anything you want. And here's my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to that and then watch it around and around the cloud and every application development and practice and DevOps and like a ham, uh, Kubernetes and Ansible and Quarkus and uh, like a lot of uh, technology stuff. And of course, I, you could just pork my Git repository and then uh, play with the interesting cloud every application development. All right. So Here's a wrap overview. So maybe you, I think so you got a lot of experience of a spring development, but don't worry if you don't even have any experience of spring, uh, maybe just developer, or even you are interested in application development, uh, you can go through 
this workshop smoothly. And here are just some few challenges for uh, existing Spring developer. Uh, I just bring up the four uh, characteristic here. The first of all, the lack of control and flexibility. So in general, uh, a lot of Spring developer have to uh, decide the upfront underlying architecture of applications such as imperative or reactive. For example, uh, when the Spring developer needed to develop reactive application, they needed to use a totally different technology and uh, different application architecture like a Spring reactive and, uh, and, and also a Spring uh, integration stuff. It's totally different than general uh, synchronized application like a just Spring Boot. And also, if you want to integrate, I mean, Spring developer wants to integrate like a serverless function or uh, like a public cloud uh, native service like Amazon Lambda, and developer cannot use the same technology across the spectrum. Instead, the Quarkus actually uh, allows developer to build uh, the cloud every application just one time and then deploy with multiple uh, serverless platform. And also there are native uh, dependency and integration uh, extension. You could actually use the same capability on multiple uh, application architecture like a reactive, but also in parity. And another challenge is the complex ecosystem. If you're not familiar with the Spring ecosystem, as an example, Spring Cloud, Spring Security, Spring uh, AMQP, and Spring Integration, etc., using them with the Spring Boot uh, will uh, make you miss many uh, concepts. Maybe that would be great if you, if you had started using them independently. So. If you want to uh, integrate your reactive application with the backend Kafka system, and you have to bring some Spring integration as an ecosystem into your Spring Boot application. This is another hurdle to catch up new technology, not just core Spring Boot capabilities. And also there are some lack of developer experiences, uh, for example, remote uh, container development. If you have some chance to attend the Spring One uh, last few to two days, I actually were, were there. So uh, some guy from VMware actually showcased the inner loop development uh, using uh, Spring Boot and a lot of tools like a Telep Presence and Scaffold and a Nix. So you can actually uh, have inner loop development with the remote container platform like a Kubernetes or a Nix, uh, the small package container environment, which means that you could uh, change your application and that immediately uh, deploy to remote container platform automatically, just like uh, debugging on your local machine, like a live coding, hot swap stuff. But in order to use that and enable that feature, Spring Boot actually uh, is required to use third-party tools, as I said, telepresence or uh, uh, scaffold, something like that. But Quarkus actually already built in the native feature, like a remote dev or just dev. I'm gonna showcase a uh, real quick demo in the middle of the workshop. The last thing is uh, native limitations, so based on Grail VM compatible. So Spring Native is still better, and then there are a bunch of uh, feature needed to add on Spring Native. For example, you cannot coverage all Spring ecosystem when you build native compilation. And also you have uh, some deeper approach to uh, develop your application on Spring Native. For example, a lot of developers are already familiar with the using annotation approach when you develop an application, but you need to more consider to function functional approach rather than annotation approach to make that application as a native compatible. But Quarkus actually built on and was born on native compilation as well as uh, JDK hotspot, which means no limitation, almost no limitation, almost 99% same capability with the JVM uh, application. So these are four things to develop a challenge, but it totally depends on the 
your use case is if you uh, not considering a native comparison, maybe you don't have any challenge for that. If you're not uh, considering about the reactive application programming or security or integration stuff, maybe complex ecosystem is not your concern at this moment. This is uh, most likely general challenge challenges for Spring developer uh, in this era. So here is our focus for Spring developer uh, hands-on experience today. You're gonna get starting application development based on one of the most popular Spring example packaging application, which is built on MVC pattern. Uh, even is we're gonna use Spring Boot. As you see in the left side, you can see the uh, view control repository. Uh, like an MVC pattern application. And then we're gonna convert this Spring Boot application to Quarkus. In the end, we're gonna strangle this application a uh, little bit more a microservice architecture and the deploy Kubernetes cluster. We're gonna use a push to container platform today. So a little bit uh, drill down uh, each step. The first step, uh, we're gonna just uh, check up uh, how the Spring Packly application looks like. You don't need to change any application code. Just uh, run that application on your web IDs, uh, web-based ID tool, uh, core ready workspaces, which is built on Eclipse Chat, which means you don't need to install any software, like a Maven, Java, or even JQ, and even a Q command line, OC command line, because it's all built in this web-based ID tool. You just need to open new web browser and access it. I'm gonna uh, give you some of the URL at the end of this uh, presentation. So this is just a quick overview of your uh, spec cleaning application. In the second lab, uh, you're gonna uh, break down each layer to convert Quarkus application. The so first of all, we're gonna try to uh, convert presentation layer using uh, the Q template, which is a short name, Quarkus template engine. So it's designed uh, specifically uh, to present and render your uh, web application like HTML and JavaScript, et cetera. And then the one beautiful thing of Quarkus, you just run Quarkus dev mode, uh, also name is a live coding. Once you run the Quarkus application, you don't need to even recompile, rebuild, restart, re repackaging your application. You just keep changing application and the Quarkus uh, detect the change code automatically and then recompile and the restart and uh, stop and restart your runtime. So this is a definitely uh, one of the great benefits of the Quarkus for developers. And move on next, we're gonna uh, convert the, the, another layer, it's a control layer. So Spring basically provide the, the dependency injection DI container, and then the Quarkus provide the same thing, even better, like a, a IOC a, a CDI, the context of the dependency injection by default. So we're gonna run how to refactor Spring DI to Quarkus CDI, and then uh, the last layer is data transaction. So we're gonna uh, go through. Uh, refactor from Spring Data JPA to uh, Quarkus Hibernate ORM with a panache. So you can run how to make it reduce your line of codes from Spring Boot to Quarkus, and then you can get rid of like a uh, get a setter and also uh, the panache and Hibernate ORM automatically, or wire actually your uh, data field and attribute in a table schema, etc. And the next thing is the uh, let's say okay we gotta done uh, modernize Spring Boot to Quarkus, but still you got the same architecture like a model view and a control like an MVC pattern. Now this is not perfect architecture to deploy Kubernetes cluster for considering high scalability and then loosely couple and the lazy bind something like that. So we're gonna try to strangle Spring Monolith to Quarkus. Actually, it's to still Quarkus application, but a little bit more um, adopt to uh, Monolith architecture. So we're gonna strangle to separate uh, independent microservices, such like uh, this 
a high level architecture. And then each Microsoft architecture have, has a small data store, like a post SQL, and then we're going to deploy it to OpenShift container platform. So, uh, the last thing is, so we're going to add a more Kubernetes native feature such as the service discovery, resilience, load balancing, and then we're going to add, uh, health check, uh, to make sure if your application is ready for receiving the end user request. And also we're going to add the secret and config maps, some stuff to store your sensitive information, uh, in a Kubernetes re resources rather than your actual application. So, how to get started to uh, this workshop? <clears throat> so first of all, please make sure you're gonna use your web browser today. We're not gonna install any software on your laptop. And then here is the Chrome and Firefox version. If you want to use the Internet Explorer, uh, please just use Chrome, Firefox rather than Internet Explorer. We got some problem with the Internet Explorer. <clears throat> and then if you, uh, something weird like a hang up or a stuck in your keyboard thing, just reload the web browser. But if you still have a that issue, <coughs> sorry about that, just let me know. I'm more than happy to address your issues. And then please turn it off your VPN or local firewall on your home networking, and also uh, pose your uh, ad block on your uh, web browser, on your local machine, your laptop. And then here's our uh, Git repository uh, after your session. Maybe you want to uh, just report uh, the application uh, source code. Uh, just go to here. And then this is a URL. I'm going to just copy. Uh, let me uh, let me copy uh, just from our uh, in the chat uh, just a bit later. So here's our Bini URL: Bini Dev Comp US twenty one dash Quarks dash Lab. Once you uh, access this URL, you can see uh, this page. So you put in your email address and the password is all the same. OpenShift all lowercase. So you can print your actual email address or you can add your fake email address. We're not gonna verify your email address, but the format should be email address. And then once you uh, sign up, uh, uh, you will be uh, show to this page. So here is your assigned username, like user one or user 10, and password all the same, open shape. And here is the uh, lab instruction, click on focus for Spring Developers. Okay, so uh, just a quick uh, uh, bring some use case and demo. Here's my YouTube channel, Bini Demo Daniel o TV, and just subscribe that, and you can find a lot of Quarkus demo. And then here is the, uh, the more Quarkus uh, resources here, uh, Red Ed IDC uh, Quarkus study, you can find the performance metrics and compare it to existing cloud native Java framework like a Spring Boot. And then here, just self service portal. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, self service Quarkus learning courses. You can just go to using web browser and try the dash Quarkus in the URL. And the code that Quarkus IO is the uh, project generator, like a Spring Initializer. And then, uh, once again, this is a Quarkus for Spring Developer EFU. You can actually go to this URL and then just download it for free. I actually, I want to co-author uh, this book. You can find a lot of the example and practice how, what, uh, what difference between Spring and Quarkus. For example, a RESTful application development, uh, in a data transaction, like a persistent and event driven application and cloud uh, environment development. So a lot of uh, enterprise ready use cases here. So I'm gonna stop presentation and then uh, I'm gonna go quick through uh, this one and then before that, I'm gonna copy 
Uh, this one. Give me a second. All right. So copy this one. I'm gonna put on chat. All right. And it was. Yep. Go ahead. I was gonna say I dropped the link in chat, and I can also um, give you any questions that come up. So if you wanna multitask. Oh, pretty cool. I didn't know that. Thanks, Isabel. Okay, so let me let me uh, real quick uh, go through when you click on this one. And the one you when you click on uh, when you access the bin URL, and you can go to here. So and then for example, my email address and password open ship. When you submit it, you can go here and then click on uh, this lab instruction. You can find the actual today seven instruction. And then sometimes you lost your user ID here, and then you just click on that and the, print the, your username once again. Make sure all the time you can see your user ID in top of your web browser because you got to copy from uh, some of the uh, command line or uh, application code, which uh, should be bind to your actual username. And then there are uh, quick introduction and core radio workspace. As you can see, click on core radio workspace interface and you can find here core radio workspaces. And then back to the here, you want to cop clone the today application. Uh, when you click on uh, this source code or the command line, just click on and automatically it's already copied to your uh, creeper. You don't need to control C, something like that. And then back to the here and then clone and then paste the add and then I just enter and then select the departure location and then click on open new windows. It's already described in the lab guide. I'm just uh, showcase uh, real quick how to get started. Maybe sometimes uh, people lost because they, uh, uh, they don't even have some chance to experience around the uh, code radio space or web-based ID too. So once you got here, and then click on your cube icon. You can have a terminal, and then also you can uh, log in open automatically based on your username. And then here we go. So you already log in here, and then here is the uh, your application. And then back to the instruction, and then. You need to change the uh, key repository branches. Actually, this is the already uh, there. So, but just to make sure everything is okay. So here we go. So we have a right branch open to for seven. And then the first step, you're gonna run Spring Boot application using Maven commands. So go to here and then run Maven command line, and then it will be start of your Spring Boot application. So once you spring with the application and start, and then you just check it up, all uh, functionality and features are working uh, for pet clinic uh, perspective. So when you go to here, you wanna open your ADA1 port, yes, and then uh, open the uh, link, and you can find the link, it takes some time, uh, they're ready to get received, and then you just reload the page. In the meantime, you gotta have some small preview on your side, when you click on uh, the open new link here, you have a, uh, one of the web browser. This is actually running on Code Radio Workspace Edge Container. And you can find, go to just click through uh, my interview and then something like that. So this is how to get started. And then you can just uh, unpull and pull uh, uh, this old menu. Okay, so back to the instruction. So this is the uh, how to get started. And then once you uh, log in here, and then you can just go through all single detail. But one, my recommendation, don't try to just copy and paste all command line or application code. Just try to understand uh, the goal of each section is. So, okay, this section, I'm gonna convert Spring Data to Quarkus Data. Uh, what kind of Quarkus feature I needed to use and uh, how it works, something like that. And then, so I'm going to make it available, this workshop environment until midnight today. So feel free, uh, go on your workshop experience after workshop. So don't worry to 
uh, short time, you know, one half, half hours. A little bit more focus on understanding the Quarkus feature and how to convert it from Spring to Quarkus. And then if you have any question around the Quarkus, and then please let me know on the chat. And I'm gonna put on the uh, more resources in, in the chat as well. So one last, one, one more last thing. Uh, it's really too boring. Uh, I'm just uh, turn my camera off and then I'm gonna give you some less of time to go through the workshop for you all guys. But maybe uh, after 30 minutes later, I'm gonna just quick Quarkus demo uh, because we released Quarkus 2.2 uh, just a couple of days ago. So there are a lot of bunch of new interesting for developer like a continual testing and live coding and uh, some of the stuff in dev UI, dev CLI that not part of this workshop. So I'm gonna showcase a uh, little bit uh, live demo real quick, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm gonna move back to uh, turn my camera on uh, during the demo. In the meantime, feel free to uh, jump in the chat and uh, ask anything. So let's get started and uh, now time get your hands dirty, all right? So here, I'm gonna put on the chat. Now I'm gonna turn off my camera. Okay, a uh, quick question here. So can you put your progress here on the, put on the chat? For example, um, doing the lab three or lab two, something like that. So I hopefully you guys already done in the lab one, go through the Spring pet cleaning application. So I just wanted to uh, check if you are actually doing good. So please uh, put your progress on the chat. Like I just left number. Oh, wow. Diego, you are really good at it. So by the way, I'm gonna uh, showcase a quick demo around the Qualcomm 2.x 3 p.m. Eastern time. So, oh, you guys are all doing good. Thank you. All right, uh, I think so you guys good, right? I mean, good progress and then any technical issue, so which is good. So I just, uh, showcase a real quick demo around the Corpus 2.x version. So just feel free, uh, go to the lab environment, but also maybe you could just purge your workshop stuff and then just focus on what's happening in the Corpus 2.x because you actually using Corpus uh, 1.11, which is a uh, Red Hat build of Corpus, the product, uh, product ready support. A uh, little bit behind the race community version, we are planning to release a new Quarkus Red Hat build support of Quarkus 2.22 uh, uh, a little bit uh, October time frame. But in the meantime, maybe uh, you already have some experience to play with the Quarkus 2.0 or you are interested in uh, what happened and what's next and uh, what's new in Quarkus 2.x. All right, here we go. So this is my sample application. I actually uh, put in the sample uh, application based on reactive thing because the Quarks 2.2 uh, adopt reactive application by default. So based on uh, both about Vertex engine and then you got all reactive thing on Quarks application, even when you expose your RESTful API, it will be handled by reactive mechanism, but you can still use imperative application uh, implementation uh, based on annotation. So here's my sample application. Oh, just here we go, the just reactive thing, and then a few applications. The first of the first thing first. So we're gonna start Quarkus application as a demo that you already doing. So you actually doing Maven commands, but I'm gonna use a Quarkus CLI. So Quarkus CLI is actually, uh, you can 
generate corpse application based on the command line. And then you can add the extension, you can remove that, you can and find a lot of stuff based on CLI. So I'm gonna use a quirk of CLI, quirk of CLI and then uh, dev mode to run this application. So it will uh, start off in a second uh, because the first time you're gonna download all necessary dependency uh, from your know, Palm XML, which is specify your dependencies for enterprise application capabilities. So, so 5005 is a debug port. And here we go. Oops, back to here. All right. So once you run Quarkus application, you can find a pretty new stuff here, test the post, and then you can press R, resume, does continue testing. You can actually do that in a Quarkus dev CI. Okay, so here's the version uh, 221 final. This is a race one. And I'm gonna open new URL. Here we go. In the local host 8080 in the dash Q, uh, slash Q slash dev, it is brings you to Quark's dev UI. So it's a rich uh, interface for graphical way, uh, how to handle uh, your Quark's application configuration and dependency, like an extension and a lot of stuff here. So here's the simple terminal, open it, and then you can run uh, test running. And then actually all testing pass. This is a based on JUnit test. So along with test driven development, a lot of developers just try to skip unit tests even though your application is working. But sometimes you got some big mistake uh, when you work together, you are a developer team because you skip the unit test. So you can click on the test result and then we actually uh, uh, success three tests. When you actually, when you go back to application and under the test directory, and you can find the three test scenario based on quark test annotation. So uh, we have a, a few rest endpoints like a hello and hello greeting, and then uh, here is a create number of different parameters. So this all succeed. And then I'm gonna show a little bit interesting stuff. You can actually rerun the application and back to the uh, dev UI. And then here we go. Here's a reactive uh, rest endpoint. And when you click on the list endpoint, and you can find all, let's go to uh, just access the endpoint uh, real quick. So the cross 8080 and hello. And then I'm gonna make it zoom. And this is hello. And then another thing is uh, like a uh, greeting Dan, and you can hello greeting my name, paper name Daniel. And then also uh, what else? Like a stream and uh, number five. Like that. Okay, so this is a reactive thing. Uh, we're gonna uh, return your uh, name, like a hello Dan, uh, five times so with some uh, small uh, slight uh, latency. So your function, all application functions, features are totally working. And when you go back to our dev UI, and then I'm gonna make it uh, zoom out back to the there you are, and here is the your uh, endpoint scores. This is a performance dashboard for your endpoint Pacific Korea reactive application. So there are hundred percent green mark, but the other two is the red and the yellow. So what do I mean the yellow and green and uh, red? So there are three different uh, criteria to fulfill your reactive application. First of all, resources means so functionality. So as you see, our application endpoints totally working, which means 100%. Even yellow is 100%. But writer is how to return your method, how to return code on your reactive method. And the extension, uh, execution, uh, how do you create your worker thread based on reactive mechanism? So, 0%, there is some uh, potential issue, a performance perspective. And then the other one is there are two performance issues for writing and execution, but still functionality is working. So just imagine that when you deploy this application to 
Kubernetes cluster, and then you have to scale out this application more than thousands pods on your Kubernetes. Sometimes you got a, a very low performance, even though the functionality is working on your local machine. So this is a really good benefit and feature uh, on Quarkus that showcase your developer. So you don't need to uh, maybe maybe sometime you find this potential issue in production, maybe it's too late. So, so go back to uh, application, let's try to fix the problem. All right, here we go. So one is a hello and the other is the uh, stream count name parameter, the last one. Okay, I see here, uh, first of all, there is a blocking annotation which he allows uh, developer to make this application as imperative. But as you know, we are gonna use a React, REST Easy React when you go to Palm XML. Here is a REST Easy React thing. So all uh, RESTful API uh, treated by reactive application, not imperative, but you actually use imperative way the blocking. So I'm gonna comment this one and back to here and reload the dev UI. And then now I just fixed this problem. So now I fixed it uh, execution model based on reactive thing, not imperative. And I go to here and hello. And then, so three endpoint method, actually you use the uni and multi, which is a similar concept, mono and flex in a Spring Boot reactive but we're gonna use a uni, just return the string type, single return, and then multi is a streaming return, uh, like a collection. But the hello is actually not reactive return, like a just object, like a imperative way. So we're gonna use this one as imperative way, but more specific return type, like a string, not uh, abstract object. And also we're gonna use Maybe I just save this one as a string and to fix the writer uh, perspective and then reload this one. And I gotta change the writer thing, but still I got a uh, performance issue execution model. So because this is still imperative application, not reactive thing. So I'm gonna uh, need to leave this method as an imperative way to do that. I'm gonna add a non broken annotation. So I just save a file and I'm back to the here and I reload the dev UI to check it out our performance dashboard. Now I gotta fix the all performance issue on my Quarks application. And then still uh, the application like a uh, uh, Daniel and I can change the same times so or 10 times Daniel. So functionality is still working, but I fixed the performance problem. It's a potential in production environment. So this is a really great thing. Uh, of your Quarkus application, uh, showcase WI, uh, since it's Quarkus 2. And then another uh, interesting thing is Quarkus. This is not just a Quarkus 2, it's uh, uh, already we have a Quarkus 1x version. So unify the configuration. As a general practice, a lot of developer, regardless of Spring or even uh, Pojo Java class, you needed to consider multiple target environment deploy the application. To do that, you have a multiple YAML file or property file, or you need to refer to a uh, metadata database uh, to distinguish this application should be deployed test environment and uh, production or pre-product or staging, etc. But Quarkus actually provide a single application property file, like application profile or application YAML file and unified one. And then how to handle multiple environment? To do that, actually, Quarkus uh, gives some uh, prefix. For example, here uh, with the ampersand, and then you can find the dev product test. You can actually uh, define custom prefix like a pre-product or a stage or a QA, something like that. When you use the predefined prefix like a dev, which uh, refer to Quarkus dev. So when you run the Quarkus dev mode, the Quarkus automatically pick this all configuration with the prefix dev. And when you're packaging one install application, which 
only pick compilation with the prefix product. Maven Betafy report to prefix test compilation. So I'm gonna add a dev and a user uh, and then like a username uh, like a uh, Daniel. Uh, save a file and back to here and let's just try to add config properties here and then name equals uh, username and I'm gonna add one username to save file and I just remove the unnecessary blocking and let's try to add this one like a hello username and the same file and back to here and local host 8080 and I just run it and then you can see hello Daniel and when I change that uh, so this is a really interesting and then back to the dev UI and here's a compilation editor you can actually uh, visualize all compilation, not just the application side, but also all uh, the runtime uh, particular compilation, like a build time compute. So let's try to search username. I just made one, this one, Daniel. I'm gonna change uh, Isabel, and I just save a file, and then you can find the green means you just save a file, and then back to the local, and reload this application. And it takes time, uh, sometimes to go to here. Okay, let's check this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we gotta actually fail uh, the continual testing here. The meaning is hello, but uh, the actual return is well. This is one of the great thing in the continual testing. So back, to, you can actually find that. Uh, Isabel, and then once you load, okay. Back to here, you can find it in terminal, something like that. Let's change it to uh, fix the continual testing problem. And then once again, uh, open the terminal window, and then here we go. Hello, and Isabel, Let's save a fail. Save a file and then when you back to the terminal and it's automatically testing and all testing, testing and then back to dev UI and then you can find all testing song and then you can open that result and then you got all just fix the continual testing. Still application working. So when you open new terminal window, let's try to using uh, one of the call command. Uh, call Uh, local. Let's, I'm going to use my HTTP Pi tool and hello. And here is our annual. And then back to the WI. Okay. Oh, yeah. We just changed it. Oh, we just added this one. Okay. So I'm going to save this file. And here we go, the Isabel, and I'm back to the terminal window. There we UI and the compilation. I'm gonna close this one, the username. Yeah, change the uh, my Daniel and then save a file. And back here and the reload is changing the Daniel. And then when you go to uh, our application code. You can actually change that, Daniel, and then you can actually change it com application property itself, or you can change that in a dev UI, something like uh, Justin, and then save a file, and then and reload here, and then Justin. So, so one of the good thing on the dev UI, you can see uh, the performance dashboard, like a less easy reactive application, but also your compilation editor on your dev UI, you can 
uh, find all configuration with the graphical UI to change that. So this is the uh, really good thing. So and uh, so already you mean so my uh, ID tool. So my ID tool VS Code, and I'm going to use a Quarkus theme. You can actually add the Quarkus theme on your VS Code. So this is just pretty interesting. Uh, you might uh, have for Quarkus 2.x to uh, and uh, configuration editor and a performance dashboard. And actually go back to one uh, configuration editor. So back to the here. So maybe there are some uh, a, a small bug to prefix thing with the configuration. So, so if you I change that uh, back to the Daniel, and then I'm gonna add part of username is uh, James. Have a file, you know back to the terminal window and I just stop. And then I'm gonna try to maybe clean package this application. So once I package this application and then I'm gonna run this application. Oh, we got some error. Oh yeah, so there are uh, testing fail. So let's try to skip the test. So you're gonna actually uh, change the test uh, on your, the uh, test case here. So we already fixed the problem, you know, continue testing, but in the meantime, I actually change it one more time. So that's why you got an error. So when you go to target directory and then uh, Quarkus app, you can find the uh, Quarkus Faster here, and then using to run Quarkus Faster here, target victory, app, and Quarkus run job file. So as you see, the product profile activated, but previously in that mode, you can find the uh, uh, live coding uh, activated and then uh, the developer profile activated. So what that exactly mean, and then go back to window and then hello 8080, now you can hello James, so not Daniel. Now back to uh, stop the here and then Quarkus step once again. And then uh, let me uh, bring this up real quick. And then now you can see the depth activated and the live coding activated. So this is how it works to uh, pick up the right compilation uh, on your the packaging or development mode. So this is a really convenient way to uh, distinguish your application proper in the same file but different prefix. All right. Uh, I think uh, almost done. And then maybe I'm gonna showcase okay, so one more thing. Uh, so the other one is uh, GraphQL. So let's try to add, this, uh, just try to change the comment line. And then Quarkus uh, EXT extension and list. And then you can find what extension it, uh, already install your project and you can actually find like a reactive one and then you can actually uh, Quarkus uh, EXT and installable and the searchy like a Amazon and then you can find all uh, available extension and you can actually go to uh, code.quarkus.io it's a project generator and you can find everything here. And you can generate the application like a Spring Initializer. Okay, so back to the here. So let's try to add a few uh, extension. And first of all, uh, we're gonna add, uh, let's say, Quarkus. what about the Quarkus template, like a queue, you actually using that queue on your project. So here's your Quarkus queue. 
So I'm going to add uh, Quarkus reactive queue because this is a Quarkus uh, reactive application. You know, that Quarkus EXT at uh, Quarkus reactive queued engine. So I just succeed. And then when you back to our VS code, and just to make sure that it's pulled down here, as you see, here's a Quarkus queue. Just here we go. Okay. So now we back to dev UI, and I just reload that. Now we gotta have a new uh, queue template. And then you can actually click on template, but there's, there's no template. So let's try to create a new template here. The template, you already should been there here, it's a lab three. So let go just hello HTML, something like that. And I just copy from my chat. Here's a simple uh, cute hello world and the name here we go. Okay, so this is just HTML. I don't have any resource file to render this HTML to uh, web browser. <clears throat> you actually implement some kind of resource like a uh, bad resources and a visual resources uh, in a workshop environment, but I don't even try to create the resource Java class here. But when you just create the HTML template or text file, you know, back to the our uh, dev UI, and then go to here, and then we got that, and then go to template. And then to here. It should become here the template HTML. All right, and back my Quarkus workshop. Okay, so let's try to uh, restart my Quarkus application. Okay, it's almost running, and back to the UI. And now we got to have a template, a hello. And then this is a really good feature. You can select your template and then you can uh, JSON, like a hello name, and then actually back to the here. So name is a hello. So why don't you try to add uh, Okay. Mm hmm Jason. Uh, the render. And now we hello Danny. You don't actually even implement the resources of Java class, but you can actually render. Uh, this is one of the good features for developer to render uh, your HTML resource is here. So then after that, okay, the, uh, this is a uh, look good, even though I don't have any uh, hello resource file. So, and after that, uh, you can actually create the hello resource file uh, as an example here. And for example, you can actually implement some kind of application like a hello queue and different path because I already hello endpoint here and I just, Go back to here and of course 8080 and then hello cute. Then just default is a name and then we could parameter the core param like a name is any and you kind of have the same result here. So you can actually uh, render as a preview in a dev UI. So this is one of the good feature of the Quarkus application. So I think it's uh, any question around this demo or uh, workshop environment. Okay, so I'm gonna stop demo and then uh, I'm gonna back to uh, 
maybe uh, 10 minutes later to showcase another demo. A little bit interesting. All righty. Okay, so, oh yeah, I got some, oh yeah, thanks Diego. And then uh, really appreciate you joining this session. And then yeah, please let me know on my Twitter or my YouTube channel if you have any question around the quarters and the cloud and everything. And once again, thanks for joining though. Have a good rest of the day. Okay, so I'm gonna showcase another interesting demo around the Quarkus uh, 2.x and a little bit more uh, developer perspectives. So first of all, uh, some people already know the GraphQL, uh, which is a similar thing in your RESTful API, but sometimes the RESTful API uh, gives some burden for over fetching or under fetching, which means that you just retrieve a whole data. And because the REST API is a server uh, size driven, so you got a bunch of the uh, data and then you need to uh, change that. Like uh, you need to get rid of some of the data using the uh, you know, Java base. Well, sometimes you need to call several times to API to get uh, the result or whatever you need. So this is, we call the under fetching uh, because you need to call several times and then over fetching, you uh, needed to, you just got, uh, a lot of data are more than you expected. This is all based on RESTful API. But GraphQL, you don't need to actually call multiple time because you actually change the data set uh, based on GraphQL schema. So Quarkus uh, luckily provides that GraphQL feature. So you can actually use a Quarkus tool in uh, ID tool, for example, VS Code already, I already added the Quarkus tool, like add extension. And then let's try to grab QL here. So here's a grab, several grab QL things. So I'm gonna add the grab QL uh, small i. There we go. I just edit it. Then it will come through. There we go. Okay, I just file. And then it automatically restart your Quarkus application, stop and running automatically. Uh, this is the beauty of the live coding. Okay, so once it up, and then back to the dev UI, and then reload here, and now you can see a new uh, extension, like a small i, GraphQL, click on schema. There's no schema at all, and then GraphQL UI, but there's no schema, so it doesn't work, you got some error. So back to the here, let's try to add a new schema. And actually, I added some of the schema here, like uh, the Star Wars theme uh, with the director name and the movie title and the character name, etc. But I need to expose the resources to uh, this schema. Uh, let's say theme source Java file here. Oh, I actually already there. So here is empty Java file. And I'm going to add the uh, the theme list somewhere my from chit chat and then back to the here in the meantime the Quarkus app automatically release really start and then go to schema click on schema now you got a schema here all oh. and back to the dev UI and the GraphQL UI already in, integrate your Quarkus dev UI as you see here so localhost dash slash Q and the slash e, GraphQL dash UI. And then let's try to call some of the data schema. Uh, something like uh, all theme. And then uh, what else? Like a director name and episode ID. And what about the title? And then I just call, and then you can find it's a Star Wars series. So, so 
definitely director George Lucas and the title New Hope and Empire Strike Back Return to Jedi. And so what else? Let's try to add like uh, heroes and then heroes like uh, name and surname. And then what else like uh, uh, so the lightsaber, uh, just running. So now we got uh, some uh, the hero names like uh, uh, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. And then as you see, lightsaber name, uh, it's a red and a green is uh, your lightsaber, the color. And you can actually edit anything else like a dark side. And then you can have dark side, absolutely not. Luke, uh, Luke Skywalker is a superhero, not villain. So dark side first, first, and then true. So this is uh, how to use GraphQL on the Quark as a pre-integrated GraphQL capability onto your Quark application. Pretty awesome, isn't it? So uh, just to uh, one more thing showcase. So once you develop and finish the application development, though, what is the next move? You gotta just push the application to Git repository and then just send the email to your uh, pipeline or QA uh folks hey i need to uh, promote this application to staging or a testing environment using a uh, nice ci cd pipeline but once you application arrived in a, a specific environment like a testing environment let's say and then you needed to quick send the test and you know, what if you could find errors or a bug or some of the additional business logic you missed that uh, during the development loop how to do that you just go back to your id tool and fix the problem and add the new business logic and then just push that application into git report and just make the phone call to your ci cd pipeline assigner it's a pretty general thing and known knowledge but what if you could doing same thing just like a live coding on your local environment from local to remote to kubernetes cluster so here's my Kubernetes cluster, OpenShift cluster, just like you are using today. So here's the, the sample uh, namespace, the Quark remote, but you cannot find any topology, any resources here because I didn't deploy any application for now. And then back to the, uh, the application here. So now I'm gonna add this application's view computation here. So let's try to um, or add to configuration file. Here we go. All right. Uh, so we're gonna add some few computation. To do that, we actually add another extension to deploy this application OpenShift here. So this extension actually deploy Quarkus application from local to Kubernetes and OpenShift cluster using Maven and Grad command. Uh, not gonna use third party tool like a scaffold, a, a telepresence or a, a customize or something like that. This is another good way for developer uh, avoid learning new technology stack. So, I'm gonna add uh, the packaging type here. Package type. And purpose package type, uh, which is immutable, immutable jar. Because the default is immutable. When you packaging application, it will be immutable on Linux container and deploy Kubernetes. So I got to set up the Quarkus package type is mutable. And also I'm gonna need to uh, library load the password, which is not here. Library load password. Uh, you can uh, set up any password. This is only for uh, security communication between local to remote Kubernetes cluster. And that's it. And also I need to add uh, a few OpenShift configuration. As an example, like a Kubernetes, Kubernetes, uh, 
like a client, client and first assert. True, because we actually use uh, the official CA, so I need to use a trust certification to access our endpoint. And also, I'm going to add a deployment. deployment target is open shift. You can actually use the Kubernetes and KNA for your serverless application development and deployment. And then I'm going to uh, open the loud URL, expose true, which he created a uh, loud URL endpoint to access from external user. And last thing is the, uh, I'm gonna add uh, that mode through here. So that's it. So I'm gonna uh, environment variable Quarkus launch that mode true. So this, that's it. So maybe you can actually uh, explicitly add the prod, but if you do not edit it prefix, it automatically picked up uh, whenever you add running dev mode or packaging. So this is all common configuration. So back to the here, I'm gonna stop the dev mode here and try to packaging, green packaging. I'm gonna skip unit test here. And then I'm gonna one more pass down like a Quarkers uh, Kubernetes probably equal true. For that, let me uh, make sure I mean logging the right project like a Quarkus remote. Okay, it looks fine, and it's wrong this application. So what happened behind the scenes? So it will package your application like a Maven uh, command line using uh, create your job file like a fast job. And after that, try to package container image uh, based on open JDK 11 and then push it container image into container registry, which already built in open the container platform, not external one. But you can actually specify external container registry like Quay.io and Docker Hub or Google Container Registry. And then, and then lastly, uh, OpenShift S2 processor uh, trigger uh, deployment, which means to try to find the available worker node on OpenShift cluster and then pull down the container image and running on. So there are five or six steps behind the scene when you just run maybe command line. So you don't need to use uh, third party another tool like a scaffold, customize, or teleprisions, or uh, another command line. You have to do that because uh, you just using maybe the command line. So we just packaging application and containerize this application. And then lastly, uh, deploy that application. So uh, this is the uh, how to packaging mutable application because and then just de uh, deploy success and then go to web browser and then oh here's the open shift cluster and dev console UI now your Quarks application still uh, try to start up and then oh we got some matter so they have no such file extension oh Quarks endpoint okay go back to the application here. Uh, let's try to make it some simple. So uh, why don't you try to uh, Quarkus packaging uh, mutable jar and the Quarkus packaging tie. Uh, packaging tie. Oh yeah, there are some one typo. And then let's try to Okay, one more time. Okay. So once this packaging to the application to open shift or it just general Kubernetes, you can find uh, the Quarkus runtime loads, not production profile activity. It's activated that profile, which means you got to have a live coding capability. So this is what I'm going to do showcase today. Okay, I got some chat here. 
Oh, is there my voice is okay? So Isabel said uh, my audio are just a little bit cut out, so everything is okay. Oh yeah, it's good. And oh, Muhammad, you already finished the work and finished the lab. Congratulations! And then oh, it was long. Yeah, but I it actually this workshop is supposed to finish three hours or what half a day because there are a lot of contents there and a lot of stuff to learn about not just Quarkus, but also Spring, how to implement your Spring and Quarkus, specifically some use cases like a data transaction and presentation layer, and also a representation layer, and also uh, how to add cube D and how to strangle your Monus application Monus. A lot of container, a lot of contents there, technologies there. But I hopefully I hope you enjoyed the lab and then uh, got us some maybe you need just some time to digest all stuff from Quarkus workshop. Okay, so I just did and back to the open container platform to the UI. Uh, hope this will be work at this moment. Okay, just build on. Okay, just running and try to build logs. So everybody is done. Okay, so we got out here. So now here we go. Live code activated and dev activated. So let's go. Cool. And back to the local environment. And now I need to add one more thing here. So but for that, let's try go back to here and then top row view and then click on the endpoint URL. And here's a landing page. Hello? Uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's automatic. My web browser actually automatically changed HTTPS. But this should be uh, HTTP. So maybe let's try to use a command, right? HTTP. And here we go. And name equals. Then, and now you gotta have a hello, Daniel. Oh, it's weird. Okay, let's try to hello. Uh, hello, Daniel. So because you're still a uh, dev in bottom one. Okay, let me go back to here and then back to the ID2. Let's try to add one more computation. The library load URL, this is the actual target. So that is our target, HTTP, this one, and just save a file, and then back to the terminal. And the last, let's try to using Maven command line, Quarkus, not that, remote that. It's another command line to run Quarkus application with a remote that capability. Uh, it's almost same, live coding capability and the running all application, but at the end of the starting time, this Quarkus runtime tries to connect the remote container platform like a Kubernetes or OpenShift based on the remote URL. So let's say uh, here we go. So you can find the here, try to access the remote server and just connect the remote server. Okay. So go back to our application and resources here. Let's try to change that. Uh, username, uh, let's say uh, Daniel, and I just change the application properly. And also go to Java class and then hello, and I'm going to change the welcome to uh, Quarkus and Joe Lab and DevConf US 2021. And I just save a file and then back to the terminal window and I try to run the same hello. What happened behind the scene? Let's go back to terminal window and then Quarkus automatically detects the change code like a resource class it and a property and then packaging application and resending to remote OpenShift cluster. And then it just happening, it just took uh, like a almost 4.5 second and back to here and then you got the uh, new result. So it's exactly the same capability live coding on your local machine 
but you got to uh, actually doing a remote cluster. Okay, so that's it. So we almost time here. So we got a uh, four minutes left today. And then I'm going to reshare my slide here. Back to presentation. So anyone have any uh, technical issue or uh, some kind of question around the Quarkus and uh, this specific this workshop. So once again, uh, so Quarkus is a cloud native uh, application platform and Java framework, which is more focused on Kubernetes native thing. If you definitely uh, have a lot of handy, uh, the familiar and also convenient features and tools and uh, uh, some kind of benefit and try to develop cloud neighbor microservice and serverless application on Kubernetes and Knative. Also, you can have a uh, funky extension which allows developer to uh, develop one function and de deploy multiple serverless platform like uh, Amazon Lambda, Google function, Azure function, and Knave eventing. You can go to my YouTube channel and, and then find a, a similar Quarkus thing here. So Daniel OTB, in URL. And also, as you see, here's the IDC report and a BIN URL try dash Quarkus. There are a bunch of the Quarkus uh, uh, live coding and uh, the interactive running code, something like here. So how to get started Quarkus application development and React application and uh, uh, and a Spring developer thing, but this is using Spring API. So today we uh, try to convert Spring Boot to Quarkus using uh, the pure Quarkus extension, but Quarkus still provide the Quarkus uh, Spring API compatibility, which means that you don't need to change any Spring Boot application running on Quarkus as long as you have uh, Spring API compatibility, which Quarkus provide. When you go to guys and Quarkus.io, and then here is compatibility, and then here is all compatibility around the Quarkus with the Spring Boot, like a Spring DI, Spring Web API, Spring Data, and then Spring Security and Spring Cache, etc. But just a little bit, you might need to change like uh, some of the annotation which Quarkus does not support at this moment. And also, uh, but without that, you just need to change it, uh, the Maven bomb from Spring to Quarkus. And then you just run Spring Boot on Quarkus, which you can have live coding, and also you can have a native comparison, et cetera. But the reason I we try to use pure Quarkus extension today because there are no limitation to develop the same capability for cloud every application on Quarkus. Because if you want to use Spring compatibility, Spring compatible API on Quarkus, maybe you got some limitation. Maybe you need to wait for uh, another Spring compatible API from Quarkus. So I'm not gonna recommend that uh, movement. So rather than uh, just try to use a pure Quarkus uh, API, okay? So that's it. Uh, that's all I have today. So thanks again for uh, joining the, this session today. And then hopefully you guys enjoy the Quarkus workshop. And uh, just people reach out to me directly by Twitter and the YouTube channel. And then I'm more than happy to address any question there. So any last comment, Isabel, uh, to wrap up today? Yep, I was just coming back on to say thank you. This was a great demo. Um, always good to get your hands on something new. Um, so thanks for, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, hopefully we get to meet in person one day, you know, and matching DevConf hoodies. Um, but I don't see any more questions in the chat. So thanks again, um, and enjoy your long weekend. 
talk to Raider and then have a good way we can and hopefully see you soon in person. Thanks, Isabel. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah, bye.